Ambassador Travik, it's great to have you here and welcome to Jakarta and Indonesia is your first posting as ambassador. How do you feel about that? What are you looking forward to here in Indonesia? First of all, there's a thanks for, for having me. It's an honor to, to meet you. Um, it's a great honor for me to be here in Indonesia. Uh, I really look forward to, to working here because Indonesia is a country moving quickly forward, economically expanding. Uh, education is going the, the right way. Indonesia is taking a bigger and bigger role on the regional and world stage. It's very uh, exciting. So I look forward to lots of things. Of course, I look forward to, to learning more about the, the culture, to getting to, to know Indonesians. And I already love Indonesian food, so I'm sure I'm going to have a great time here. Well, do you think you've known Indonesia? I mean, have you been to, have you visited the country before? And yes, I, I have, and I've uh, visited the country about three, four times be, before. Uh, also, I've been following Indonesia quite closely. I used to be the right-hand man of uh, Minister Solheim, I was his chief of staff. And after, the, after Norway and Indonesia agreed to work for the climate together four or five years ago, we've been following Indonesia very, very closely. And our leaders have been in regular touch, so I've been following it quite closely. But I think it would be very unwise of me to say that I know Indonesia well. It's such a big and diverse country. So that's part of the thing I look forward to, to, to learn more about Indonesia and get to know Indonesians. And Indonesia is so far away from Norway. I mean, you're very far away from home. And actually, not many of us have visited. I mean, we've heard of Norway, but not necessarily have visited uh, Norway. What kind of uh, interesting things do you think uh, you'll be uh, doing in order to bring the relationship between the two countries together, both as, you know, on the, the bilateral government to government um, side, as well as the people to people side? I think it will be exciting uh, times. I think Norwegian business is uh, about to discover, they're beginning to discover how many interesting opportunities there are in Indonesia. Norwegian students are beginning to, uh, to realize that uh, Indonesia is a very interesting country. I want also more Norwegian tourists to come here to, to Indonesia to, to experience the wonderful culture here. And there are actually already quite a lot of uh, Indonesians who go to Norway. In the background here we have a picture from Lofoten in northern mm -hmm. Norway. And quite a few of the Indonesians that go to Norway, they go on a cruise ship that visits this part of, uh, of the country. Then I already know that Indonesians, I like Indonesian food, but Indonesians also like smoked salmon. <laughs> so I would like uh, Indonesians to eat even more smoked, uh, smoked salmon. I'd like us to cooperate more in technology. Uh, and we're going to have more high-level visits. Our uh, Crown Prince and Crown Princess are very happy. They have just received uh, an invitation mm -hmm. from the President to come to uh, Indonesia. Yes, uh, tell me about the, the upcoming visit and what they're looking forward to. Have they been to Indonesia before? Would that be their first time? That would be their first time. And our uh, Crown Prince and Crown Princess are very interested in Asia. They actually took a few months off from their official visit uh, duties to, uh, to visit uh, India and Nepal. So they stayed uh, in villages in India with the whole uh, family traveling around by, by car discreetly. So I know that they're very excited about coming to Indonesia. I think they want to celebrate the good relationship that we have in climate, in uh, business to people to people relationship. But also I think they want to promote in Norway that this Indonesia is a country of opportunity. And of course they want Indonesians to discover Norway as a society where uh, there are interesting things uh, going on and uh, a place for Indonesians to, to visit. Okay, um, let me just quickly ask you about you yourself, um, Ambassador, because you have a very interesting past prior to your coming to Indonesia as an Ambassador. From what I understand, you dealt in conflict areas such as in, in Africa and also in Afghanistan. And I hear that once you were even kidnapped during one of your missions. And on the personal side, you're actually married to an Afghanistan lady. Yes. <laughs> and you yourself, you told me that you are a Muslim. Now, so tell me a little bit about your past and your background and where I, uh, you got to where you are now. 
I think for uh, for a diplomat, it's important to be interested in the world and be interested in people. Yeah, and uh, I think I told you also earlier that when I was young, I had two things I wanted to do: either become a journalist like you, <laughs> or become a, a diplomat. So my first experience of the world outside Norway was as a sports uh, player. I was a judo player on the national level, so I started traveling around the world. I got to, to discover that there, there are many things outside uh, Norway, many interesting uh, So things. you were in the Olympics? I was in the Olympics in 1992 in judo wow. uh, in Barcelona. Um, then I joined the, the foreign ministry and a bit by chance uh, I started to work on conflict areas. There, because I did judo, I came into contact with local people. So uh, I was actually brought back to Africa 10 years later as a special envoy during the, the last crisis in Ivory, uh, Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. We tried to get the person who lost the elections to leave office and get the guy who won the elections in, uh, into office. Um, that's a good thing to see here in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. yeah? People graciously bow out when, they, when they've lost. So I then went, later on I went to Afghanistan. I worked there for four and a half years. First as a diplomat, first I was deputy head of our embassy, then I was an advisor in sports to the, the Afghan uh, Olympic Committee. So I brought them back to the Olympics, mm -hmm. they were suspended until 2004. And then I worked for a humanitarian organization. Then I came back to Oslo, and one day I was in the minister's office, we received a delegation from Afghanistan, and there was a beautiful lady translating for that dele delegation, and that is my now uh, wife. So uh, I was already, I became a Muslim in, uh, mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. So I'm a Sunni Muslim, like the majority here in, uh, in Afghanistan. My wife is Shia. Okay. My so your wife older is a children, Shia Muslim. I'm a Sunni. And you're a Sunni. Yeah. And your children? I have two boys from a previous marriage. They're 16 and 19. They are uh, Christians. Okay. And uh, my little girls, I don't know what, uh, what they are yet. I think, they, uh, of course, they are Muslims. But it, it will be up to them if they want to, to follow their mother or their, or their, uh, their father.